Hey everyone, I'm Jim, and in this Unity Visual Scripting tutorial, we're going to beat up a destructible robot Kyle. And the way we're going to do it is with state machines. As an object or enemy takes hit point damage, we enter a new damage state and swap game objects. And of course, we'll get into a couple other cool things, like making an explosion. Quick note before you start, uh, import Bolt before you import my tutorial package. That way the graphs will work right out of the box and you won't have to recreate my variables. And before we dive in, I thought it might be useful for you to see some of the prep work I did for this tutorial. I brought Kyle into Blender and fixed some of the robot bone rotation weirdness. Then I duplicated his mesh for each state, separating out the arms and the head. I applied the armature on those objects, so in effect this deletes the armature on the limbs that will fall off. I included the Blender file if you wanted to take a closer look. Then I went into Substance Designer to create cracks, and I put them over Kyle's texture in Photoshop. And then, you know, why stop there? I took Jammo, the player robot, into Substance Painter to give him a custom look. If you haven't heard of Substance before, Substance Painter is for painting 3D models, and Substance Designer is for creating procedural textures. Alright, with all that done, let's go into Unity. There are just a couple steps you'll need to follow to get the package to work, and I've included those in a PDF below. This way, if it's necessary, I can include some notes and changes after I've published the video. The top folder has everything I made for the project, and then I have free assets from the asset store with some modifications in the other folders. So the scene we're working from is the State Machines of Destruction home ec tutorial scene. Let's start by taking a look at the player robot. I adapted a player controller from Explosives Free RPG Animation Pack and connected it up with the Jammo robot. The animator is actually on the first child object of that. With robot characters selected, bring up an animation window because I want to show you that Explosive has included animation events for us. So if you scrub the timeline, you'll come to one of those animation events. It's that little tag right there. And there, if you hover over it, it says hit. Now hit is calling a function on this game object, on a script on this game object, and that's what we're going to make use of. So go back to that robot character object, and you can see that there is a script, and I made this script. It's called player hit enemy. So double click on that. And actually, let's take an overview of how this is all working. So here's that animation event that's calling the hit function, and the hit function is in our script. There we make a vector 3 called hit contact. Hit contact is the player's position forward and up a meter. We only want to hit an enemy if an enemy is there. So next I'm checking to see if enemy, which is just a game object variable, is not null. And we'll know an enemy is in front of us if we're on the enemy's trigger, on a game object that is tagged enemy. If we have an enemy, we're going to trigger a bolt custom event on that enemy. And the enemy in this case is Robot Kyle. And the custom event we're triggering is called player hit event. And I'll select Robot Kyle so you can see where that custom event is being triggered. And then we're passing that hit contact location as an argument. Kyle will use the location for spawning the hit particle system, the sparks that will fly from him with each punch. In the player hit event state, Kyle is going to give himself 15 points of damage. If you wanted to build off of this, you might add another argument on Jammo that he sends this damage over, just like he sent over the hit contact, but I wanted to keep things simple here. And then Kyle's going to trigger a, another custom event just for Kyle himself, and that custom event is called check HP. Check HP is an event that's happening in the transitions because we're checking the HP to know what destruction level Kyle is at. Let's take a look at Robot Kyle's state machine, starting with the player hit event state. So here's the custom event that is called player hit event. And we have an argument coming in. The argument is the vector three. And the vector three is where we are setting the position on a particle system called sparks. So I have a prefab dragged in there. Now let's see what the flow is doing below this. So here we just have a check to see if there is a particle system. So if it's null, if this variable is null, we're going to have a message in our console that says no particle system. And that would mean that you don't have anything dragged into this sparks variable. All right, so we'll go back up. So here is the transform set position for our particle system. Just in case it's inactive, we're setting the particle system as active. Then we're playing not only the top level particle system, but every particle system underneath this game object. That's what this with children boolean means when it's checked. 
Next, we have a deduction of our current hit points. Right now, the damage is just on the subtract node, but this is where you would connect up the argument from the custom event if you wanted it to come from Jamo. That would mean that Jamo is sending or inflicting this value on Robot Kyle. After we subtract 15 from 100, we get 85, and so we set that value to the current hit points. And then Kyle triggers a custom event called Check HP on himself. And like you saw in the overview, check HP is triggering these transitions. Let's start at the top and go into brand new. And actually, what happens in the states is pretty simple. So for this first one, all I'm doing is setting the current hit points to be 100. And we only enter this state on start, so that's the only time that it's happening. All right, let's check out our first transition. So here we have that check HP event, and we're checking to see if the HP has dropped below 80. We're doing the same thing in each transition. We're getting that check HP event, and then we're checking to see if the current hit points are below a value. On each transition, I've named the transition to be whatever that value is. So this first one is called 80, and the next one is called 60. So this has no bearing on what number we're checking, so you've got to be a little careful there. But just to illustrate and make it clear what's happening, I've put them here, and you can hold Alt and hover over the transitions. In the last transition, we're checking for 20. It should probably be 0, but the numbers just kind of worked out for this to be 20 before we go into the ragdoll. Now I want to show you an issue that has happened because of me wanting to keep this really simple. When we get into this, say, ragdoll state, we're also going through all of the other states. Uh, so we're not just going from three to ragdoll, we're going through all of them. And the reason that's happening is we're entering the first state of destruction anytime we're less than 80. So it would be better to add a greater than to check if we're above what we would need to go into damage state 2. So this way we're only going into damage state 1 when we have the values for damage state 1. And at this point I'd start making variables for the value needed to enter damage state 1 or 2. And I'm sure you know how to do that so I went for simplicity here. Before we go into destruction level 1, take a look at this list of object damage states. These are the objects that we brought in from Blender, so if you expand Robot Kyle, you can see all of them there, and they're named according to the corresponding damage state. Let's go into the first damage state. So when our hit points are below 80, the first thing we do is we turn off the first model, and then we turn on the second model. And then we instantiate the right arm, which is not attached to the armature, it's a separate object underneath Robot Kyle Destructible. I'll turn that on right here. It's the right arm. And then it has a box collider and a rigid body on it. And the mesh model is underneath that. The reason I did that is it makes it easier to rotate and adjust the box collider. It's worth noting here that the way that this is set up is that the body will still animate even though it doesn't have a limb anymore because the body is still following the root bone. The arm goes where the collider and rigid body goes. It doesn't have a skin mesh renderer, it just has a regular mesh renderer where there's just like lighting and material settings. So the arm is boneless. Okay, let's go into the next state. So this will be the state we go into when we're under 60 hit points. And this is going to look familiar. We're going down the list and we're turning off the second model. So I'll turn that off and then turning on the third model and I'll uh, deactivate the right arm so we can see the third model here. There's no arms because we're activating a left arm that has a rigid body on it and it's not connected to the bones. Okay and then next we go into the third damage state when we're under 40 hit points. And then we do the same thing again. We turn off damage 0, 02, turn on damage 0, 03, where I have a particle system. So I thought that was cool. And the reason why that particle system is cool is because we're activating a head like we activated the arms. So that head should just fall right off. Now, when Kyle has less than 20 hit points, things get interesting. So on the enter state, I have a coroutine enabled because we're using a weight unit. Then, because we're switching to a ragdoll where the robot's going to flop over, I'm going to turn off the capsule collider that's on the robot. And I'm also doing that so we don't keep targeting and attacking this dead robot when there might be some living enemies that we want to fight. 
Now we have a change here. This time we're turning on the next model first before deactivating the previous one. So we're turning on this ragdoll model, uh, which that that's the parent and yeah. So you can see that this robot Kyle damage zero three has a ragdoll root and the old one has the original root. So we're switching to a new bone armature, which is the ragdoll bone armature. The reason why we're activating this ragdoll object first is we're going to hand that smoke particle system coming out of the neck to, we're going to make it a child of one of the ragdoll bones. That way, the smoke particle system will follow wherever the ragdoll goes. Now, smoke ragdoll bone is actually just the ragdoll's hip bone, so ragdoll hip bone would probably be a better variable name, but, you know, as you work, the variable names get better. Uh, and then we turn off the previous model. And since we've passed off the particle system to a new game object, we can turn this one off and we won't be turning off the smoke. Here I've changed the tag on this game object. So again, we can't keep hitting them or targeting them. We're going to give a little time for the ragdoll to flop over. And then we're going to use that same hip bone. We're going to get the position of it. And we'll use that position as the origin for a physics overlap sphere. What this does is it collects all the colliders in a sphere, one meter radius, and then it collects them into an array. Then I use a for each loop to go through every item in that array, every collider, and then on the collider's rigid body, we're going to apply a rigid body at explosion force. The force mode is impulse, which is a sudden burst of force. And we have an upwards modifier so that it lifts a little bit. The cool thing about doing it this way is not only do you get a force on all the limbs of the ragdoll, you also get a force for anything around the ragdoll. So you might think of something like the exploding cars in Grand Theft Auto, how that explosion affects other things that have rigid bodies and colliders in a radius around the car. Okay, once we've added an explosion force to everything, we exit out of the for each loop and then we instantiate some explosion effects. And we also feed in the default quaternion. So there's the prefab on that game object variable. And you can see those effects in the effects parent object there. Okay, back in the graph, um, we're using the hip bone of the ragdoll for the position of the explosion effects. Instantiation also needs a default rotation, and that's what quaternion get identity is. Then I set the explosion particle game object to active, just in case it isn't. And then we do a game object destroy, so the game object will be removed from the scene after one second. After that happens, some of the particles will still be alive. And that's cool because Robot Kyle will be gone, so it's like he exploded. I have a couple other things I've included in the project. Uh, the first I'll show you is called damage item pop off. And this happens on enable. We add a force. So let's say the arm falls off. Make an uh, object variable that's a vector three and call it add force. And this will be some force that happens on enable when you have the limb. So you could have a limb pop off when we set that limb to be active. And I think the head popping off is the perfect example. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to add a flow machine. I'm going to drag in the damage item pop off, and then I'll create an object variable called add force. And then the head should just pop off uh, right up, right? <laughs> like it's like it's almost like a spring. So uh, I'll put a force of. Well, I started with 20, but 20 was a little too subtle, so I changed it to 200, and that's what you get at 200. I also have an explosion force on the hip bone for the ragdoll. So the ragdoll is pushed on the local x-axis backwards. Uh, it'd probably be better to figure out how to get the player's forward direction in here. So wherever the player hits, the ragdoll flies back from that. Uh, direction. And finally, if you hold the left trigger on an Xbox controller or left shift on your keyboard, you will be able to target different enemies. I have a very simple and not so great targeting system here where we do some ray casts and whatever the ray cast finds, if it's tagged enemy, we set that enemy to the target variable on this RPG character controller script from Explosives Free RPG Animation Pack. So you'll be able to socket to as many robots as you want. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and if you did something cool with this, write me on Discord. See you in the next video!